Good morning, family and friends. I'm going to read one of my favorite psalms this morning. But can we um, position our hearts just to look to him as we speak the holy scriptures that speak of him to him? This is Psalms 45. My heart overflows with a goodly theme. I address my psalms to the king. My tongue is like the pen of a ready writer. You are fairer than children of men. Gracious is poured upon your lips. Therefore, God has blessed you forever. Gird your sword upon your thigh, almighty one, in your glory and in your majesty. In your majesty, ride on triumphantly for the cause of truth, humility, and righteousness. And let your right hand guide you to tremendous things. Your arrows are sharp. The peoples fall under you. 
Your darts pierce the hearts of king, the king's enemies. Your throne, O oh God, is forever and ever. The scepter of your righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness, uprightness, and right standing with God and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. Your garments are all fragrant with myrrh, alloys, and cassia. Stringed instruments make you glad. King's daughters are among your honorable women. At your right hand stands the queen in the gold of Orpher. And this is the park, church, that I keep hearing this morning. Hear, O oh daughters, consider and submit and consent to my instructions. Forget also your own people in your father's house, so will the king desire your beauty. Because he is your Lord. Be submissive and reverence and honor him. So hear, O oh church. Hear, O oh church, and consider. Submit and consent to his instructions. Forget also your own people in your father's house. So in this moment, may we forget all of our needs. May we forget the meditations on our mind of the things to do. And may we just worship him. May we come to him with empty hands. Empty minds. So that he will be exalted and lifted up high. We honor you, Lord. We give you glory. We only hear for you and your presence and your word. May your word go forth and find place in our hearts today. We love you. In Jesus' name. The way, the truth, the life. 
And I 
angels cry.
Do you want to sing that one more time? We crown you King of glory. Just love on the Lord. Just love on the Lord a little bit longer.
Thank you, team. Thank you, worship team. That was so beautiful. Welcome, everyone. Um, happy Sunday. <laughs> wow, that was so glorious. 
Do we have any first time visitors in the house today? Anywhere? Any first timers? Yep, we did. Awesome, welcome, welcome. We're so glad that you would join us. And also, if we have any first time visitors online, we welcome you as well. It's an honor for you, for us to have you tune in, Lord. And so we, Lord, oh, we just thank you. Sorry, I'm so drunk in the spirit right now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Well, my name is Bianca, and I have the honor of providing the announcements today. Um, our first one is uh, serving. So um, we love that our church family is growing, and uh, we are always looking for more folks to serve. And so you can follow instructions um, on the screen, I believe. And um, if we have that, um, have the info. Oh, it's right behind me. OK. <laughs> um, yeah, please follow the instructions on the screen if you would love to serve. We have various serving positions open. Um, you can volunteer with us uh, through worship, um, vocally and online. Um, and man, help me. <laughs> you can pray for us online. <laughs> Amen. So you can serve on the worship team uh, by singing or playing an instrument. You can also serve on the production team with Ascend Kids or in the nursery in our cafe. You can also be one of our amazing greeters and um, also on in the resource store. And so those are available serving positions that we have here. Um, next thing is um, Ascend Gathering. That is uh, this upcoming weekend. Who's excited for Ascend Gathering? <laughs> Amen. It's going to be so amazing. Um, so amazing that it actually sold out. And so we actually don't have any more tickets left. And so if you weren't able to get a ticket, uh, we will catch you on the next one. But uh, one note to anybody, everybody that's coming is please, please, if you can, um, try to um, come together. So carpool, if you can, just because uh, we know that um, the parking lot might get a little cozy and tight. And so, um, so please do that if you can. And um, also a reminder, on Sunday, April 21st, uh, we will not be here. We will still have service online, so please tune in at the regular time online. But uh, we will not be here in person. That is a break weekend for, uh, for all of the staff and all the team, which uh, we appreciate so much. And so definitely tune in. We will still have a service, um, but it will be online only. And then next, all of the foodies get ready because we are having a church potluck. <laughs> church potluck is going to be on Sunday, April 28th, so the last Sunday of the month. And it will be right after service over here. And um, we do ask that you bring either a snack, an entree, or a dessert to share. And um, we do encourage you to, to stay after and fellowship. It's a wonderful way to meet the community, um, and so we're very much looking forward to that as well. Then the next one is our corporate fast. Um, yes, Lord. <laughs> um, that is um, optional for you, of course, but we would definitely love for you to join. It's going to be May 1st through the 21st, um, and so we, we do these um, every so often, and it is really a wonderful way for us to consecrate ourselves yet again, even deeper for the Lord. Um, and so if you don't feel led to join us this time, definitely consider fasting because it actually is a biblical command. Um, the Bible says when you fast, um, not if you fast. And so I know that myself and, and many others can definitely attest to such breakthrough in the spirit. Um, and in the natural in so many different ways when we just offer ourselves up to the Lord, when we basically say no to the pleasures of life so that we can actually have more of him. And he really, really, really honors that. And so we definitely encourage you to, uh, to join us um, if you so feel led. And last but not least, my favorite thing is tithe and offering. <laughs> How many of you love to give to the Lord? 
Amen. Awesome. Awesome. Me too. Um, also, if you are visiting with us today, we definitely encourage you to tithe at your local church. Um, but if you do feel led to also provide an offering here above that, um, uh, we're grateful as well. And um, interestingly, I know the worship team this morning sang about um, trusting in the Lord. And as we were singing, I trust in God, the Lord had actually been talking to me about that as I asked him, what's on your heart this morning for the tithe and offering? And loud and clear, he said, trust. And, you know, in the world, the world tells us to, to hold on to our finances as much as we can, right? Um, but how many of us know that the God, God's ways are, are totally opposite of the world? And he'll never ask us to do anything that isn't for our good, right? He has given us everything, and we can trust him. We can fully know him and fully trust him. And it's actually trusting in the Lord that brings forth the breakthrough into the next realm with him, whether it be in the spirit, whether it be in the things of the natural um, because it is an exchange. When we do, when he tells us to give above the tithe, um, whatever he gives us or asks us to give in the offering, it is a trust thing, right? It is a faith thing. Um, but he doesn't ask us in vain. He always shows up. And I believe that we're, we're going into times where we'll need to trust the Lord even more. You know, things are happening in the world, but then also he's also looking to take his body into greater depths of his glory um, and into greater influence. And that can only happen through trust. You know, imagine if a husband and wife, if they didn't trust each other, how far could they get in their marriage, right? They couldn't ever come to their full potential in their marriage. And so as we are the bride of Christ, um, he's asking us to trust him even more. And though we have trusted him to a certain extent, there's always more trusting <laughs> that he asks of us because there's always more glory and more unity on the other side of that. And so that's something that has really, really been on his heart is trusting. Will you trust me? Will you trust me when I ask you to do something, whether it be in tithing, whether it be in... Um, any other part of your life, he's really, really saying, I am the good father. I am the good shepherd. I will never lead you astray. And so I'm here to tell you today that the Lord is saying, you can trust me. You can trust me in all things and with your finances. And so as we get ready to give, we can um, bring the baskets forward. And I'm just going to pray and, uh, and bless the offering. And so, Lord, I just thank you. I thank you, Father God. I thank you that you are Abba. I thank you that you are healer. I thank you that you are redeemer. I thank you, Father God, that you never ask for anything in vain. I thank you that you are the great multiplier, Lord God. Just as you multiplied the five loaves and the two fish, Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, that you even said to the people, bring, bring it to me. Bring those five loaves and the two fish. I can do more with what you have than you can. I, can, I am the one that multiplies it. And so I thank you, Father God, that in your hand, all things are multiplied. All things multiplied for your glory. And so I thank you, Father, God, as you prepare our hearts to just obey you in, in all things, Lord God, and in, in the tithe and in the offering, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that you multiply above and beyond what we could ask, think, or imagine, Lord Jesus. You want to do greater miracles. Your word says that greater miracles shall we walk in than the ones that Jesus walked in in his day on the earth. And so I thank you. I pray that our trust and our belief would be raised so high so high that we would believe everything that you say with no hesitation, Lord God. And so I thank you, Lord God. I pray that you pour out a greater measure of faith, a greater measure of your glory. I ask that you bless every single house as they give, every single household as they give, Lord God. May it come back to them pressed down, shaking together and running over, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord God. 
I thank you that the Prince of Peace shall rule their households, rule their hearts, Lord God. And I thank you for the honor of partnering with you in finances and in all things. We bless you and we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Amen. Can we look to him one more time? If we can close our eyes. Jesus, we love you. Thank you for your presence in this place. Even now, move amongst us, O Lord. As we heard today, you are the most important person in this room. Step into us, O oh Lord. May your name be glorified and exalted in your bride this morning. May we be with only one desire, one focus on the groom, and are you pleased? Bridegroom King, have your way in this place. Thank you, Lord, for confirming your word through the reading of scripture through Vereda. Thank you, Lord, for confirming your word but the songs that were sang by Porter and Missy. Thank you, Lord, for confirming your word, for the words of knowledge that Chris shared with me. Thank you for confirming your word through what Bianca shared about trusting in you. Be pleased, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. I am so excited to share the word this morning. For the visitors, I am not the campus pastor. We have uh, our campus pastor, dear Pastor Brian is here. My name is William. I just have the humble honor and privilege to bring the word this morning time. Um, just want to take a moment to honor Pastor Brian, just so, yes. So very thankful for Pastor Brian, Zoe, and Judah, and just, and, and the body of Christ here. Just so thankful for what... Um, the Brian, his love, his obedience, his walk with the Lord, character, integrity, and just just the life that he is leading, you know, truly he is one of the servants of the Lord that I have seen that, you know, just follow me as, as I follow Christ. Just so thankful to be grateful to be under his leadership. All right, um, I am, like I said, I'm just excited to share what the Lord has been uh, 
uh, showing me lately um, about a character, a specific character in the Bible. This is very personal for me. Lord has been speaking through me through this individual uh, from New Testament. Um, this is an individual that is uh, that has been mentioned in all four Gospels. Anyone want to exercise their prophetic skills? Who that is? Um, but interestingly, I have not heard a single sermon about this person. Um, and, but the Lord has been, you know, specifically to me, He has been speaking through Him. And uh, and and interestingly, you know, like I said, you know. Uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all four of them have a very specific section about this individual. Um, and, you know, as we see all these four Gospels, if you look at them, you know, they all have a specific, they're trying to portray Jesus. It's just like, you know, we, everyone see things from a different angle. For Matthew, you know, in his 28 chapters, you know, if you look at it, he is trying to por portray Jesus as son of David. Right, you know, son of David as Messiah. Um, you know, Mark. If you look at it, uh, Mark has this in his in his I think 16 chapters. He's trying to portray Jesus as a suffering servant. That's what Mark is trying to do. And Luke, Doctor Luke, he is trying to uh, portray Jesus through this uh, 24 chapters as a as a son of man. Right, Jesus is son of man. And then we have John, John the beloved. He is trying to portray Jesus as as the divine son of God. You know, so all of them. And and I was looking at this individual. You know, all of them was talking very uh, specific at this individual and adding different note about this individual in all four Gospels, right? Anybody still have any clue who that is? No? No? All right. All right, let's uh, turn to Gospel of John. Although it's, it's written in all four Gospels, I'm just going to go with uh, uh, what John is saying, and then I'll just touch at different areas. Gospel of John, chapter... I have not heard about this individual, okay? Maybe you have heard about this person, messages. Maybe I haven't. <laughs> uh, Gospel of John, chapter 19, verse uh, 38 onwards. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly... For the fear of the... By the way, it says that uh, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus. Even I was looking at how each one of them were introducing. Look at Matthew. He's a tax collector, right? Look at his way of saying, Joseph of Arimathea, rich man from Arimathea, right? Uh, and he even says that, even, even in verse 60, he says that he has his own new tomb which he had cut in the rock in Jerusalem. He has his own property, right? He is all about tax and property. So uh, look at how uh, Matthew, Matthew is writing that. Look at how Mark is talking about Jesus. Um, um, G uh, um, Joseph of Arimathea, he was a respected member of the Sanhedrin council. So he's a part of Sanhedrin Council, you know that there is there is seventy Jews in the Sanhedrin Council, and they 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 are, they are pretty much the I would say the Supreme Court. They are the one who make the law for all the Jews. They they have incredible amount of authority, and they, it's it's very honorable to be in that. So you say so that Mark is saying that Joseph, a member of Sanhedrin Council, and also he says that he was looking for the kingdom of God. And here next, uh, we see that Luke, he introduces uh, Joseph uh, of Arimathea as he was a member of the council and a good and righteous man, right? And he also says that he was looking for the kingdom of God. Uh, John is all about Jesus. He said Joseph of Arimathea. He was a disciple of Jesus, right? Um, but secretly, you know, uh, in other words, there is a lot of adjectives that were used to see who Joseph of Arimathea, my, uh, what, what, what the God, what Lord is telling me, by the way, the title of my uh, message is gripped by love, life redefined, gripped by love, right? Life redefined, you know, those who have been hanging out with me, Chris and Tommy and Jason or Reuben or Caleb, you all know I've been, I've been talking about this guy, what the Lord has been talking with me. You know, it's, it's really when you are <clears throat> um, 
gripped by the love of Christ, you know, who he is, it just really has such an effect on every areas of your life. And we are going to see how Joseph's life was radically changed the moment he realized who this man was. The marred dead body of this person was everything for him and he was willing to let go of everything that he has not until then for this one moment. We'll see what it is. So let me continue reading here. He, um, Joseph, he was a disciple of Jesus but secretly for the fear of the Jews, right? How many times we know this is what the Lord, this is what Lord wants me to do, but there is that, that, that fear aspect that really limits us from reaching the full potential. And he asked Pilate uh, that he might take away the body of Jesus and Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloe and 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of uh, Jesus and bound it in linen clothes with the spices and, and as in the burial custom of Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had been laid yet. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they had laid Jesus there. So as we look in this place, we can see that Joseph, being a member of Jewish Sanhedrin council, basically they are the ones who really gave away Jesus to Pilate. You know, this guy, he's a criminal, he needs to be crucified. He's a part of this council, though, although it says that he did not agree. Maybe he, uh, you know, it says that they voted. He, maybe he abstained from vote. Maybe he called in sick that day. I don't know, you know, but probably either way, he, to be a part of Sanhedrin council is not something that comes overnight. It comes with a lifestyle of obeying Jewish customs and laws and you prove yourself beyond doubt that you can be a member of Sanhedrin Council. And what do we see here? He is totally going counterculture against whatever he has worked so far in his life. He's just completely giving away. And even at a moment where Jesus is own disciples denounced him. Don't even want to do anything with him, right? Peter, one of his favorite disciples. None of them, none of them were there when Jesus was crucified. But you can see that a man who was in charge to lead him to crucifixion or who is a part of the member of the council that hated Jesus with a passion and he is going counter culture. He's taking every step to tell them, you know what? I'm not on your side anymore, guys. And he's taking a step, going to the cross. Even there is a version, it says that he took a risk to go to Pilate. So I just want to share a few things. And we can see that uh, how uh, all of a sudden, the things that he considered worthy, valuable, noble, noted, and all of that. Or even look at the adjectives that used for to describe him. He was rich. He was honorable. He was wealthy, he was respected, he was educated, all those. But what do you see? All his crumbling, if I have something here, you know, all the five, he's just crumbling all of those, what the world considered him about, and he's just putting it in the trash bag. bucket. You know, no more. I don't care. You know, I might have, by the way, to own a tomb in Jerusalem, it's not a, not, it's not a small thing. To have a, that tomb that was no one was ever laid. First of all, Jerusalem at that point to own a tomb, it's like having an apartment in New York or Tokyo, right? You know, that's like the best real estate. Only the wealthy can afford a real estate like that. That too, the tombs, families reuse, you know, they use to have your own tomb. And this one was a tomb that was carved in the rock in Jerusalem in the garden. That, that's like the Westminster Abbey <laughs> right there. You know, he was like, you know, this is my the best earthly, you know, real estate position that I have, right? You know, and he is like, at this point, it doesn't matter. At this point, it doesn't matter. Whatever I consider the best, he was like, 
this is for Jesus. He gave his best. No more. This real estate, to, to be rich and to have this property in Jerusalem, when he realized, he said that he was looking for what? For the kingdom of God. Right there in front of him, as Jesus was crucified, everything that he has been learning his entire life, Torah, uh, all the prophets, the worship, the temple, the, the holy place, most holy place, everything that he knows inside out about the scriptures and Torah, now he realized all of a sudden as he's looking at Jesus, this is it. This is the one that I am looking for. This is what the kingdom of God is all about. And all of a sudden at the cross as he looked at that tree, liquid love was flowing down for him. He realized that guy is marred. That guy is beaten. That guy has been brutally crucified for me. This is what I have been looking for. All of a sudden, his fear melted. All of a sudden, his concern. All of a sudden, things that he carried, worthy and expensive, and all that he was looking for, he's working for, he just let it go on that moment. Paul says in Philippians 3 verses 5 to 8, But he says that I count everything as a loss of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ. But you know what? In here, in this case, at least, you know, Paul was saying that, you know, all this list, I'm circumcised on the eighth day, the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, the Hebrew of Hebrews as the law. I'm a Pharisee. All these huge lists that he's taking. I mean, these are just amazing Things that you can take to anyone and say that this is who I am. But now I know. But you know what? Even for Paul, I was thinking. He had the ben he had benefit of resurrection. Right? For, for Joseph of Arimathea, Jesus is not even resurrected. But even at that moment, he's just, he could easily say that. But I count everything. My position in the Sanhedrin. My real estate market right here in Jerusalem that I've been holding on for my family. The name and fame that I have in my community. I know everyone who is with me, they hate Jesus. But none of that doesn't matter. And who he is, when his heart was gripped with the love of Christ, all of a sudden, everything else he let go. When you're gripped with the love of Christ, life flows. Life starts to redefine. It leads to obedience with the Lord. And obedience leads to character. And character leads to transformation. A transform, transform light leads to abundant life. And abundant life just is nothing but a life that is sold after God. It's all about Him. Are you pleased with my life? I just want to bring uh, just a just couple of thoughts of what the Lord has been specifically speaking to me. Life redefined. First thing, relationship redefined. You know, now we see that Joseph of Arimathea, all of a sudden now he is locking arms with people that he never used to. He is now locking arms with the like-minded people. By the way, history says that Joseph of Arimathea, after that, of course, obviously he... Uh, Point blank said to Jews that and to, to Senate members, you know, guys, I'm not with you. He became a missionary to, again, this is not in the scriptures, but history says that he became a missionary to England and he was the first one to establish the church in England and in the world. First one to establish to, to a church uh, for, for Christians uh, in England. And he, look at that, all of a sudden, you know, now when, he, when his heart was gripped with Christ's love, now his relationship, whoever he used to hang out with, his friends, his associate, the folks that he used to go golfing with, right? Whatever that is, or maybe, I don't know what they played at that time, you know, horse riding or whatever, you know, but <laughs> bullock cart race, you know, whatever, you know. So he, all of a sudden he was like, it doesn't matter. He changed his association. Now he's locking arms with the Mar Mary of Magdalene, Mary, mother of Jose, the disciples who he was a part against, they thought, you know. And also some of the theologians say that Joseph had been a secret disciple for three years, pretty much. 
he was watching him just like nicodemus he was just watching but at the same time there are verses right even some of the pharisees who believed that jesus was son of god they did because of the fear that they have they were like publicly they, they were not with jesus but the, the time came for joseph he is like you know what it doesn't matter this is the time my from now on i'm not just not going to hang out with anyone the one who are with my lord i'm just going to lock arms with them this is what i'm talking about and it happened to paul what happened when paul was uh, when, when, when struck by the lightning when he was on uh, when he had an encounter with jesus himself what did he do in galatians he say it says that he went to arabia right he left everyone he was also uh, if you really study if you look at the scriptures he was also probably a part of sanhedrin paul himself being under gamaliel and he also like voting you know you'd say that you know i i voted against the christians to be crucified and all that paul was also part of sanhedrin but when his heart was gripped by his love you know what relationships were redefined he even to arabia he was not hanging out what he used to completely to the extent that he knew jesus so deep that he he writes in first corinthians on the night that jesus was betrayed he was talking first person paul you were in there when the night that jesus was betrayed that kind of intimacy that came to paul just so that he can say in first person on the night that jesus was betrayed he took the cup paul was there relationships redefined when paul's heart was gripped with christ's love you know what i'm going to hang out with the ones who are with my lord yes. it reminds me of the person who uh, of the man who found the treasure in a hidden field what did he do when he came to know that this was a treasure in the hidden field right he let go of everything he sold everything right and he decided to buy this land sold everything personally for us several years ago during the covid season for mabel and i individual and as a family the lord was tugging our hearts to uh, you know to know that there was something more than what we are there was a strategic shift in our walk with the lord during that covid season and that was a season that god really redefined some of the relationship that we were walking through up until that time there was a season that god called us to walk closer to him intimately with him individually and as a family mabel i ashlyn and lana all of us as a family and there was a strategic shift in our relationship with others in this earthly level but re- you know what that really led us to a deeper walk with the lord as we came to know who christ is and as we continued to be filled with his love this aspect of redefining relationship had a personal impact on my life and you know what it's still going on amen the other day i was uh, talking to my brother in england uh, day before and we 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 talk uh, occasionally and he was talking about something and we one of those things i was telling him you know what uh, we was talking about a specific situation and and i was telling him if if this conversation not with my brother with someone someone else if this conversation is not helping in my relationship with god or is not getting me closer to god or if this is detrimental in my relationship with christ that's it i am not interested i'm not going to go any further there might be a point that if if this is something is coming in between you and him right it is so true about marriage right on that day the kingdom the kingdom what happened when the kingdom of god it says that joseph was looking forward for the kingdom of god what is here we are sitting the kingdom of god just a small illustration we are sitting here right there are different tiers of people when it comes to worshiping the lord in this place you guys know there is a church at here you came in person there are few folks who are who know there is a church service going on they are attending it online that is good and great there are there are other people who doesn't even know that there is a service 
and it's going on. They are, they are unaware, oblivious of that. But you know, as I, nothing wrong with attending online. But if, if I am attending online, I won't be just sitting here in this manner where, you know, I, I'm not answering. I might be sitting in my pajamas, drinking a coffee, you know, legs up, you know, maybe even scrolling through my phone, looking at an email, you know, but I'm still attending the church. Right? Kingdom of, kingdom of God, it's about, you know, king, kingdom of God is about it's just coming to that level of, you know, you know about the kingdom of God. You know that is true and all, but there is something it becomes, when it comes within you, it becomes a reality in your life. It's different between attending online and in person. There is something that you will continue to position yourself to the presence of God, Amen. right? You know, I was about to talk about marriage, right? You know, this, this is the, it can be illustrated with our marriage. What happens in marriage? You know, on that day, when the girl gets married, you know, he, she is coming holding on to the, uh, the hands of her dad, you know. But after marriage ceremony, he is not, she is not going back holding on her dad's arms. He's, she is now with another man. All of a sudden, something strategically shifted and she is not going back to the same house. She is not going back to the same family. She is not go thinking about the same things. Now she is completely, this is something that she has been getting prepared for their entire life. You know, that's what the kingdom, when the kingdom of God comes within us by the power of Holy Spirit, relationship redefined. For that instant moment, relationships have redefined. No matter how close she is, she is with her dad, you know, now she is going out with another man, right? I am, you know, talking about marriage. I am one of those person, when I attend marriage, I like to look when the bride comes, you know, walking through the aisle, I always like to look at the groom. <laughs> oh, there are some folks here. Okay, you know, you know, whenever, whenever everyone is looking this way, I like to look this way. <laughs> Last time Mabel was like, hey, this way. <laughs> no, I, I can look at the bride any other time, but the, but the emotions that the guy have at that moment, you know, no matter how macho man you are, you're, you're just struggling to hold your tears. You're just, you know, the joy. I mean, you cannot really explain all. Just, uh, just looking at the groom's face at that moment, all those emotions and everything, you know, that, you know, this. Uh, <laughs> I was like, you know, I always like to look at that. So, so what I was trying to, you know, I was just thinking about even our marriage, you know, talking about dad, Mabel is... Mabel is very, very, you know, she was, now she found me, you know. She, <laughs> she was very, very close to her dad on that day, right? You know, dad was coming, you know, bringing her. And, you know, that, that's the moment. That's it. Then, then when her dad gave the hands to me. That's it. The, life has changed for her. You know, somebody was asking me, hey, William, do you know why Mabel um, uh, fell in love with you? I said, maybe my good looks, my hairstyle. No, like he was like... Before I answer, let me correct you first. You don't have good looks and your hairstyle sucks, you know. <laughs> he was like, you know why she fell in love with you? Because her dad fell in love with you first. <laughs> like, uh, so this is, but what I'm trying to say here, life has changed for her from that day on. This is what is happening here. Relationship has redefined. When the kingdom of God got into Joseph of Arimathea, he was like, no more. This is not my home. Two weeks ago, we have uh, David and uh, Daniel Papavisis. You know, all their family members are here. And I was just asking them, you know, so are you guys going to come back sometime with, with dad and mom? He's like, no. This is where the Lord has called us. Our relationship has been redefined. This is where we belong. Joseph of Arimathea, when he, his heart was gripped with love, no more relationships that is going to come between him and God. This is where we belong. This is what we are going to lock arms with. This is what God has called us for this season. Second point, thoughts redefined. Verse number 38, he asked Pilate, That he may take away the body of Jesus. You know, look at, look at this uh, renewed mindset of Joseph right here. Till, 
now his entire life he has been thinking about how to be a prominent person in community all for the right reasons okay these are jews they know the torah they know the scriptures with the truth that they knew till now everything that he was working towards was how can i be an honorable respectable member of this community you know from a childhood maybe his dad told him hey Joseph, you need to be a uh, member of the Sanhedrin. You know, I'm going to raise you this way. His entire life, this is what he was working towards. To follow the Torah, to, 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 to learn the scriptures. You know, to hate what Jews hate. To look for people who are bringing things that are, that are against the word of God. And now all of a sudden we see that he is now going to Pilate. What for? Looking for a dead body that his own community considered worthless. his thoughts you know what he started thinking when the kingdom of god came into his heart when he was gripped with love his thought process start changing a mindset start changing now he is no more entertaining his old mindset romans chapter 8 verse 7 romans 8 verse 7 it says that that the thoughts of the spirit are for the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to god for it does not submit to god's law indeed it cannot you know you see that now joseph is not succumbing his mind to an old mindset you know by the way the old mindset just because i am saved and i'm filled with the spirit doesn't mean that the old mindset is still not there it's a daily process This is the part of being hard gripped with love you die daily Amen. to self and and for Joseph on that day you know what my old mindset is not going to control me although i have been having this mindset up until this time from now on he is renewing his mind a new mindset colossians chapter 3 verse 2 set your minds on things that are above and not on things that are on earth you know set your mind that means ponder on meditate on think about you know when you go to bed you know just thinking about heart gripped with love lord what is it that you want me to do with the moment that you get up what is it your thought process you know the worldly the for for joseph up until that time it was all about how can i make the next real estate investment hey this guy had a had a good property in jerusalem how can i make more money how can i be a prominent member of sanhedrin council how can i be the leader of this council and all that but now all of a sudden his mindset is all about i am not going to think about any of those he did a, a clean cut there is no turning back for him because it's for him it was worth it all because his heart was gripped with his love first peter chapter 2 verse 11 beloved i urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of flesh which wages war against your soul This is an intentional life that God is calling us to. Hebrews 11 verse 9 and 10. By faith he went to live in the land of promise as in a foreign land living in tents with Isaac and Jacob heirs with him of the same promise. The richest man in the world all the options that he can he can build himself whatever he wants to but he know that this is not my place i am a sojourner i am a foreigner in this place his thought process was changed last week um i lost a very close friend of mine who i led to christ and who was in ministry he was having some heart issues you know i try not to you know we we don't talk much about because i always speak words of faith into him but you know once in a while when i ask him are you go, going to be okay you know he's like you know how about 
wife and child and you know and he would say i'm not worried about them i know who i trust he did not find any moment to gather some wealth for his wife and his only child whatever he got he was going full force full force heart gripped by his love even though his physical heart was working at like i heard like towards the end it was like 20% was only working physical heart was troubled but his heart his inner man was going full force he's like i am not worried about my wife and child i know whom i trust he will take care of them joseph was not worried about anything at that moment he did not care whatsoever i have few more verses i'm i'm going to move on to the next one offense redefined this is a part of a heart gripped with love john 19 verses 38 and these things joseph of arimathea who was a disciple of jesus but secretly for the fear of jews asked pilate that he may take away the body of jesus you know he let fear control his life even though he knew this was the truth right how many times it's a peer pressure i myself i have str- i have struggled and i have been struggling with that but not all of a sudden now he is going head on against the establishment for which he have stood on completely counter culture when he was filled with god's love look at this he realized that he was not called to conform but a realization came upon his life regarding whose he was to whom he belonged and he saw the price that was paid for that right in front of his eyes he saw the price that was paid on that tree and you know what i don't care who am i who i am going to offend at this moment this is who i belong to this is whose i am i am his and he is mine where to read that this morning forget your own family members i don't i'm not exactly sure what is that psalm that you read can you please read that verse if you will please get that that verse right there there is a there is a righteous violence within us that could be offensive for the world but you know what offense is redefined for me this is what can you please read that that portion right now hero daughters consider submit and consent to my instructions forget also your own people and your father's house so will the king desire your beauty because he is lord be submissive and reverence and honor him wow look at that <clears throat> when he saw that what has been paid for him in the cross he was like no more no turning back for me next point here <clears throat> righteousness redefined look at this in luke chapter 23 verse 50 luke 23:50 it says that now there was a man named joseph from the jewish town of arimathea he was a member of the council a good and righteous man he was a righteous man right what made him righteous because he followed the torah to the t or tried to right he tried to do follow the torah the scriptures mosai commands everything to the dot he's trying and according to the world that's what righteousness is that's why he got that testimony right he was well respected in the jewish community because he was a righteous man righteous according to the law but now he realized what i cannot be righteous anymore this law that tells me what i am righteous it cannot fulfill what the law is telling me 
In Isaiah 53, he remember this verse of Isaiah 53, I mean 64.6. He says that all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. For him, the righteousness was, uh, was completely redefined. You know, the world might say, this is what you, the way that you need to do. This is what the way that you need to live. This is the thing that you need to do. That's not the righteousness of God is. When a heart that is gripped with love, your life, the righteousness, what the world consider is not what's going to dictate who you are. But right? even, even the aspect of giving. Bianca mentioned that the world says, hold on to what you have. The word of God says, give. Give it all. Right? World says, do back what they did tit, tit for tat. Spirit of God says, no, that's not my righteous. Romans chapter 8 verse 3. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin he contempt sin in the flesh. In other words, he realized that the righteousness that I think that I had is fake. Because now I know the law of Moses that I had been learning so far, it, was, it is not able to save me. This tree and him, this is the only thing that can save me. And I go, I surrender, I give it all. The righteousness that you consider big deal, I don't want it no more. The good name that you say that I have, I don't care. I'm pretty sure in this community, don't hang out with Joseph or Nicodemus. Look, these guys, you know what they did? They took that body. By the way, do you know that that body has been on the cross for so long? Right? And it was, they have to do things in hasty. You know, when, when, when Jesus is dead, you know, I was just thinking about it the other day, how to take the nails out from his hands and feet and the hand stuck in one place. You know, you can't break the arms. They have to slowly massage it and bring the hands to shape. The blood, the water, the everything, it is all stuck. And he, it says that he was not even rec being able to recognize as a man. And they are like, you know what? When everyone hated that body, he's just going there, wrapping it in linen. Just want to bring, come to my last point. A heart gripped with love, life redefined, boldness redefined. Mark 14, 15 verse 43. Joseph of Arimathea, a honorable counselor, which also waited for the kingdom of God, came. And, and Mark says here, he went boldly unto Pilate, and craved the body of Jesus. This is NK, sorry, KJV. He craved, he desired for the body of Jesus. He went boldly to Pilate. Because you know what? It was a little risky for him in every way. First of all, there is no telling what his members of Sanhedrin is, Sanhedrin is going to do to him. No telling. They're going to kick him out, obviously. Second of all, he's going to Pilate. Jesus is crucified for treason. And it is a Roman culture that when you are crucified, to further humiliate you, they leave the body on the cross. History says that they let the body sometimes rot on the cross. The birds come and peck you. Dogs come and bite you. And they don't even give them a proper burial. They just dump it to the valley of Ginnom. That's next to it. It's called... The mountain of skull, Golgotha for a reason. Because it was filled with skulls everywhere. Because they want to show them, if you commit treason, this is what will be done against you. But when Joseph of Arimathea, when he realized an honorable man, 
you know what the influence that i have i am willing to let go i saw someone wearing a, t- t- a shirt uh, um, a sweatshirt that says if i perish i will perish today i don't know who that is somewhere today here but as they did he was like you know what yeah pilot you don't want to associate with a guy who has been crucified for treason but you can see that and there there are other options where you know if a family member comes and ask they could uh, give the body but even when it comes to treason they have the full right to deny that too but at the end of the day nobody wants to associate with someone who is hated by the community not even disciples there but you know what look at him his boldness was redefined you know when it when your heart is gripped by his love you know i mean that's so evident even in our human relationship right if someone try to do anything against my wife or my daughter there is no shame there is no fear you're willing to give your life away that moment for joseph he realized he suffered all that for me this is what the kingdom of god is all about that i am looking this is what i was seeking he completely on that moment just for god he was it doesn't matter how much i am going to get humiliated even if P- pilate denied i am going to pilate and ask for his body john chapter 12 verse 43 nevertheless many even of the authorities believed in him but for the fear of the pharisee they did not confess it so that they would not be put out of the synagogue for they loved the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from god how many times i have been there that i know this is what his love is enabling compelling me but you know what what are they going to think am i going to lose this connection i am go am i going to lose this platform am i going to lose this influence but for joseph on that day he made a resolution in his mind you know what i've got the boldness that lion of judah is within me the kingdom of god is at hand now i realize he did not let at that moment onwards he did not let fear control his life i was reading um how jesus uh yesterday uh in luke i think it's chapter 11 that jesus went was invited for a dinner at this pharisee's house man jesus did not hold back in his house i mean he was called as a guest for it and he 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 just went all the way he's like you know what you can't live like this you can't be a hypocrite i know you are a pharisee but you can't be a hypocrite i am the living son of god and they were like jesus you are offending us <laughs> he's like yeah i am offending you here is some more <laughs> I mean he the boldness that he carried that's what Jesus is calling uh, Joseph of Arimathea on that day he decided I am not going to let fear control my life I have several 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 more points here but I'm going to conclude here if you can please stand up if the if the prayer team if you can come forward let's close our eyes spirit of god was talking to me personally when i was meditating this william i know that you know the scriptures there is lot of talks going on is your life really sold out for me he really convicted areas in my life
Is that love? You said you love me, right? How about that situation? Did you exemplify me? Jesus, may our hearts be gripped by your love. <laughs> Let your spirit redefine everything, everything in our life. You redefine Jesus. You define our life. Our obedience. Our phone calls. Our relationships. Our finance. Our eating, drinking, who we hang out with, our hobbies, our time management, our sleeping, our investments, our family members, our decisions. Lord, you decide. May we be obedient, just like Joseph of Arimathea, who was willing to let Holy Spirit redefine his entire life that he had built up thus far. Completely letting it go. As his heart was gripped by the love that was shed on the cross of Calvary for me and you. Maybe you need to take a moment this morning. As the Holy Spirit ministers. Missy of Porter, if you can be on the keys. As the Holy Spirit minister to you, take a decision, Lord. May the Spirit of God shed light in areas of your life that is not fully surrendered. Maybe fear is gripping your heart that is stopping you from going into full mode of obedience. Maybe people pleasing is something that you are struggling with and the Spirit of God is reminding you this morning, let it go. Either in or out, there is no middle ground. Where do you want to go? Jesus, we surrender. Our body, soul, mind and spirit may it come into full Alliance with you. Be glorified. In Jesus name. Amen. If you have any prayer request. You can come forward for our prayer team. But if you want to take time. To commit your life to the Lord.